Assalamu alaikum, this is me Dr. Midra. Today I will discuss another interesting case which we encounter in our world. Uh, I will discuss history and examination and then I will correlate those history and examination with my differential diagnosis and then narrow down my differential diagnosis to a definitive diagnosis. Now to begin with, let's start with the history. A 30 year old female patient present to us with chief complaint of weakness, easy particability and amenorrhea for the last two and a half years. She is also constipated most of the time and has pain in the upper extremity, upper part, uh, in the proximal part of the upper extremity and lower extremities. Uh, she is beta thalassemia. She has a history of beta thalassemia minor, and also uh, uh, she has a cousin marriage, and she is gravida seven, of which four are alive and the other died because of thalassemia major. She sometimes occasionally feels dizzy and has a loss of interest in daily activities and feels low. She has a history of postpartum hemorrhage in his last delivery and by, by which she was transfused several pent of whole blood and also after that she was unable to lactate her baby. Although she was able to lactate other uh, babies but the last baby she was unable because of decreased milk production. This was the history of this patient so what do you think about this? Do you made any differential of this case? So always when you take a history, you must have a, some differential diagnosis in my mind, uh, in your mind. So in my mind, the uh, differential in this case may be a hypothyroidism, uh, maybe a postpartum pituitary gland necrosis due to that of blood loss, uh, maybe major depressive disorder, or maybe some type of anemia. So these are my differential diagnosis in this case. After taking history, we will proceed to the examination of this patient. Uh, on general physical examination, always take vitals first because these are the indicators and markers of the internal organ, whether they are functioning normal or not. So on general physical uh, and vitally, the, the patient pulse rate was 70 beats per minute, respiratory rate was 17 uh, breathing per minute the blood pressure was low which is about 90 by 60 uh, mm of Hg and she was epibrile and was cool to touch uh, she was oriented in time space and place the now hand examination hand examination uh, she, she her hand was pale palmar creases was pale and also the she was cool to touch and have a dry skin the pulses were bounding uh, and regular the eye examination was normal normal extraocular movement reflexes was normal but the conjunctiva of the eye was pale the tongue was pale also the thyroid was soft and small thyroid was present axillary and pubic hair was absent and also the uh, jvp was normal the orthostatic hypotension was also present in this patient as the diastolic, uh, the difference between the diastolic pressure on standing and uh, on lying down and then on standing was more than 10. So it was a significant orthostatic drop was present in this patient. Also, the, the uh, mild pedal edema was present, sacral edema was absent, pedal edema was non putting edema. Uh, and also there was a tenderness in the upper in the upper part of the upper extremity and the lower extremities. Uh, on CVS, uh, it was S1 plus S2 and mid systolic murmur was present in this patient. GI2 was soft, uh, abdomen was soft and non distended. Uh, also, the uh, uh, respiratory system, the bilateral vesicular sound was present, no head sound was present. Lower limb examination shows that the tone power was normal, but there was a delayed relaxation of the deep tendon plexus, so, uh, which we also called Goldman sign. This sign was present in this patient. The rest of the examination was unremarkable. Uh, so this was the examination. Now, do you take anything from this patient? What do you think about this? Uh, yeah, we, we, when we examined this patient and take, took a detailed history, I came to the conclusion that this patient has multiple problems. Like, for example, one, one that this, this patient has anemia. Why this patient is in? Because she was pale, conjunctiva was pale, palmar creases was pale. Also, there was a weakness and physical capability in this patient. The another symptoms is that she was hypothyroid. Why she was hypothyroid? Because the dry skin, coarse features, also the deep tendon, the delayed deep tendon reflexes was present, and it is it has a positive predictive value of nine to two percent. So you must take that uh, hypothyroidism in this patient seriously. Also, the she was I forget about that symptom. She was constipated most of the time. So uh, this was also a clue for hypothyroidism. Also, the she was hypocortisolism. She has a she was uh, his cortisol level was low. Why she she was having hypocortisolism there because he was having orthostatic hypotension and occasional dizziness. These are two symptoms which can correlate with the hypocortisolism. Uh, 
she was also um, having decrease and uh, hypoandrogens like uh, she has amenorrhea for the last two and a half years also uh, she pubic and axillary hair was absent in this patient and she was unable to lactate her baby because maybe the prolactin uh, was low so based on this we conclude that there might be some some lesion or something going on in the anterior pituitary as the history indicate that she has a postpartum hemorrhage severe postpartum hemorrhage which she was transfused several pent of blood so maybe it's a case of shehan syndrome but we have to confirm it through the investigation now the investigation we did first we ruled out the pregnancy in this case as she is amenorrheic so first rule out pregnancy pregnancy test was negative we then ordered blis blis cbc complete blood count shows anemic picture hemoglobin was 7.6 i will show you in this as you can see the hemoglobin is low mcv is low mch is low so mcv is low uh, also because you you see that the in beta thalassemia minor the my, there is a hypochromic microcytic anemia that's why the mcv the size of the red blood cell is low and also the mean corpuscular hemoglobin the hemoglobin inside one red blood cell is also low so the hypochromic microcytic anemia is present but one thing is there mostly in thalassemia you may see red blood cell increase but in this patient it was 3.3 so the red blood cell number is decreased so wh why this patient is anemic so maybe it was uh, something nutritional deficiency but she was taking folic acid vitamin b12 multivitamins the main reason is maybe the thyroid and cortisol is low and the thyroid has a positive influence on the hematopoietic stem cells so it can proliferate that hematopoietic stem cell but if the thyroid hormone is absent and the patient is hypothyroid then that patient may present with the low red blood cell count and anemia so it was one of the reason another reason is because beta thalassemia minor but beta thalassemia minor don't cause such a drop in hemoglobin uh, it was 7.6 so it was a significant uh, also we did um, that serum electrolyte the sodium was low so the cortisol is low why the sodium is low that's it can be explained by such that the pressure of this patient was low so in order to come uh, in order to make it uh, normal the adh will increase and that adh will will increase water reabsorption and will cause dilution and hyponatremia so in this case sodium was low and also because of cortisol deficiencies we also did glucose uh, rbs uh, rbs was at the lower limit of the normal this is because the cortisol was low and cortisol increased the blood glucose level while in this case as the cortisol is low so the blood glucose is also low so when we do these investigation we then order several other investigation like thyroid function test and uh, so tsh t3 t4 all the nice was low the morning cortisol level was low so it it shows that they uh, all the lines how the sheep the patient is hypocortisolism and so hypothyroidism then we order mri so to look at the pituitary gland whether there is any region or not so this patient was hypo having hypopituitarism but there are several causes of hypopituitarism in this case the history was significant for the postpartum hemorrhage uh, the inflammatory cause you must rule out also like their patient does not have any history of any uh, infective causes like uh, STD and syphilis this patient don't have any headache or uh, extra polar movement or normal visual equity was normal so the tumor and these things were ruled out and when we did MRI look at the MRI it was astonishing in MRI I will explain this finding at the, to you in MRI the, uh, I will explain first the normal and then the abnormal look at the normal uh, MRI you see that the interior pituitary in the normal MRI is filled it contain um, some mass okay normal anterior pituitary look like that in T2 image you may see why uh, the CSF white so in normal uh, MRI this CSF does not come to the anterior pituitary area but in other in other like Sheehan syndrome anterior uh, in which postpartum pituitary gland necrosis occur this CSF, CSF may leak into the anterior pituitary because that part of the gland has been destroyed and that CSF will come to there to uh, replenish that area and you can see the only part which is remaining is the posterior pituitary so this was a case we confirmed this case with the uh, MRI and it was Sheehan syndrome we this patient was well managed 
uh, we stabilize this patient first by giving a uh, hydrocortisone 100 mg IM injection hourly and then we also especially as hyponatremic then we also give appropriate sodium chloride in order to increase the sodium uh, by 10 mg equivalent per day we also transfuse two pints of blood in order to rise the hemoglobin or uh, um, and also we disturb this patient on hydrocortisone 10 mg at morning and 5 mg at evening you can give prednisolone but uh, you can convert 10 mg of hydrocortisone is equal to 2.5 mg of prednisolone we also give thyroxine as she was hypothyroid in order to replace the ongoing deficiency and also to improve her symptoms follow-up advice was given to this patient in order to correlate with the TSH value also we gave oral contraceptive pill in order to regulate her menstrual cycle as her baby was complete so she didn't need at this time any pregnancy but she may need ovulation and in future if she want to get pregnant at the end she was counseled to make sure she take medication properly as she needed for lifelong also she was given advice to carry medical alert bracelet where uh, her name and the diagnosis of the disease are engraved also she was given uh, she was given emergency kit which which include hydrocortisone uh, as in emergency she may need if there is an any crisis a uh, hypocortisolism occur so this was a case of she hans syndrome she hans syndrome occur when the there is a postpartum hemorrhage normally in pregnancy the anterior pituitary electrotropes cells which produce prolactin in largest but uh, after the delivery of the baby or when there is a postpartum uh, hemorrhage occur the blood volume decreases in order to maintain the blood pressure the, the vessel constrict so in the anterior pituitary those vessels constrict and the blood supply to those part will decrease and it will result in the necrosis of the anterior pituitary other factor also included in the Sheehan syndrome so my my case was a acute Sheehan syndrome then later converted into chronic Sheehan acute Sheehan syndrome was picked up by the inability to uh, to breastfeed her baby and also amenuria and then it also uh, progress into the chronic Sheehan syndrome manifested by hypothyroidism and hypocortisolism and other symptoms. So the key home message is always if a patient has a postpartum hemorrhage always anticipate about the chronic Sheehan syndrome uh, in near future and advise the patient that she should cons uh, consult a doctor if any symptom occur and most of the time the latent period between the symptoms and the, the postpartum hemorrhage is up to years as in this case it takes about 2.5 to three years in order to fully develop these symptoms so this was it inshallah i will upload more videos regarding clinical cases counseling and general guidelines until then assalamu alaikum